Hi, I'm Michael Ducey, Senior Manager, Managed Openship Black Belts here at Red Hat. And I'm here today with Narav. Welcome, Narav. Hi, I'm Nirav Doshi, and I'm a Managed OpenShift Black Belt at Red Hat. And today we are going to talk about Azure Red Hat OpenShift and how customers can capture and forward logs with an ARO. So Narav, one question we get from customers are what kind of logs exist uh, in our ARO cluster? And, and I guess the second question is, is how do we get them off there? But let's take the first question. What kind of logs do we have? So we, we have three types of logs. We have cluster logs, or we, oh, I would call it infra, infra logs. And uh, these are logs related to uh, uh, your control plane, your worker nodes, all of that logs are captured within Open. So these ways, think of them as your operating system logs that might that's be on those, those nodes that are running your workloads. That's right. The second type of logs are your audit logs. So all the activities that are captured uh, from your OpenShift API. Uh, uh, so for example, if anybody has... Um, uh, requested for a workload, uh, or you somebody's doing an upgrade, all those activities are captured uh, into these audit logs. So essentially, anything going through the OpenShift API that either an automated process or an end user is interacting with the API, it'll go into the audit logs. That's right. And then the third type of logs are your container logs or your application logs. Uh, so these are logs uh, generated from your application and these are captured within your application logs. So these are the logs that the developer's gonna care about because it gives you insight into what's actually happening inside of their application. And I'm assuming it's a lot of standard out from our containers that are running in a, inside of our pod. Yes. So now that we have these types of logs, um, kind of show us inside of an ARO cluster how we can set it up so we can forward these logs into maybe let's say, uh, in this case, let's use Azure Blob Storage. Okay. So. Here we have our ARO cluster and within our ARO cluster, we have uh, pods running and these pods can be your application logs or your logs uh, related to your uh, worker nodes. And then uh, basically everything that's running uh, will be in your ARO. So the first thing that we would do is uh, install a low-key operator. And what low-key is, is uh, it is a log aggregation uh, system. So it, it is a log aggregation system. Uh, so in order for us to capture this log, we would use vector to capture the logs and use low key for indexing these logs. So the logs are gonna to go to Vector. Vector is basically the stream aggregation and it'll create a single stream and then forward those over into low key, which will do uh, some basic level of indexing for us uh, right. before we ship them off to storage. Yeah, so, so once you have that, the next thing is you need to create an Azure Blob Storage. So we are using Azure Blob Storage, but you can use any storage. And once you create this, it will create a secret uh, and an access key. So you need to now have the secret configured. I mean, the keys can be configured uh, within, uh, within the OpenShift uh, namespace or you can use uh, uh, OpenShift secrets, or you can use an external secret like uh, Azure uh, a Key Vault, where you can uh, basically uh, take that, those keys and then configure that within the lock, low key stack uh, custom resource. So it would be the low key custom resource within the operator. Okay. So now Loki can actually, it has the connection and the ability to talk to that storage, right? That's right. Yeah. The next thing is you would install the cluster forwarding, I mean, cluster logging operator. And this will be, basically it has, um, uh, it is a API management. So it has multiple API management to collect and forward these logs. So you would, create a custom resource like and configure everything from uh, collecting, forwarding, 
uh, forwarding and everything will be in this custom resource where you can take those logs and forward it uh, to, to the storage. So here, for example, uh, there are three types of logs and I just want to store my application logs because my developers can access to uh, access and query uh, from, um, in this case, it would be Azure uh, Log Analytics Workspace, for example. But let's say, for instance, my uh, security team, they have their own log aggregation tool. And, you know, um, these audit logs sound like something I wouldn't want to necessarily store in the same location where my developers have access, because this is all about who's doing what to the cluster and yes. get information on other people's namespaces, user IDs, and those sorts of things. So what if I wanted to just take the security law or the audit logs and ship them off to my security team that might be using another log aggregation, aggregation system? Yeah, so you would go through the same process, but the, the only thing is basically you will configure your secret for this uh, storage and then forward those logs, just the security logs from the uh, uh, from there. And uh, so there are multiple ways uh, you can um, multiple ways you can uh, collect and store it to different locations. And then I would assume for my infrastructure team, I could also have the infrastructure team get their logs in a different location because they might have their own tooling that they want to use. That's true. So you don't have to send all the logs to everywhere. So there can be uh, third party uh, tools that uh, or you might have your enterprise tools that you uh, have standardized and you want to use those logs and query them. You can always uh, send those logs using uh, both these operators. Great. Thanks, Noral, for coming by and explaining how we can forward logs into, uh, in this case, Azure Blob Storage, but how we can just forward logs in general off of our ARO clusters. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching as well. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, would like to learn more about Red Hat's products and services, you can always visit our website, of course, at redhat.com.